Minute Warriors, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate and I share a weekly video with you every Monday around something related to menopause. Today I'm talking about why do women's breasts get larger through the menopause and beyond. Not all breasts get larger. There are some cases of women's breast tissue actually getting smaller. But in large part, the vast majority of women who've yeah, they've been wanting bigger breasts all their lives and then they go through menopause and, and all of a sudden they've got them. I was also really listening to a really interesting story the other day about this lady who did not want breasts at all. She was a real tomboy as a child. She didn't identify with her breasts. She identified very strongly as a woman, but she just did not want to have breasts. And she actually actively tried to get them removed. She had a full hysterectomy, so she was thrown into surgical menopause. And... Um, she found that these breasts that she'd not wanted all her life was suddenly getting bigger. And she looked for referrals to get them removed. And of course, nothing like that exists because you obviously if you have cancer, you can have the mastectomy. If your breasts are too large because of health concerns, so they're affecting your posture, they give you a lot of pain, you know, you've got the obvious sort of channels in, in the tops of your shoulders where your, your bra straps are digging in over a certain size and weight. In some instances, you are then allowed to have them reduced, but not removed. And she, first plastic surgeon she was referred to, said, you know, that they only deal with enlargement, so that was no good. The second one, said to her that he thought that by removing her breasts, she was doing something awful for the female race. And I just think that is shocking. Surely if she doesn't want her breast, she's she was nearly 60. She's lived with them all her life. She's decided by the age of 60 that she does not want them. So why on earth not allow her to have them removed? So then she finally came across a plastic surgeon who agreed he he the she fulfilled the criteria that anything over a d plus cup she could have them reduced so she thought ah okay well i'm onto something here he's at least going to support me but she didn't want them reduced she wanted them removed he said Let, let's measure you up let's have a look they were big enough for her to actually go into surgery to have them reduced and he removed them for her as per her request and it really struck me because when she had gone in for her hysterectomy, with prior agreement, she had specified this with her surgeon that she wanted to have um, a vertical scar and not um, the horizontal scar, which surgeons tend to do because you can hide it beneath your bikini level, you know, it's underneath your nickel line. When she came around from the surgery, he had not obeyed her wishes and he'd given her the one beneath her, you know, the horizontal one. She expressly had said to him, he, she did not want that to happen. She wanted to protect her energy meridians throughout the body and had specifically requested a vertical incision. The fact that, yes, breasts do get larger and a lot of women want larger breasts as they get older for some of us, they don't. I don't want mine to get any bigger. I, I don't want the, the 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 weight of big breasts pulling me forward. And for her, I thought it was absolutely shocking that A, she had to really search hard to find a surgeon who was willing to sort of bend the rules in order to fulfill this the wishes of this woman that clearly did not want breasts. And, and also then for her to have a hysterectomy and to, with prior agreement, that her wishes were then not granted through the surgery. It really makes you realize that when you're going through the menopause, you really do have to be your own best friend. And you, sometimes you might have to fight hard to get your wishes granted. So if you're one of those women who has larger breasts and they're getting bigger and seriously larger, there are certainly in the, in the UK, there are certain instances, depending on their size, their weight, various health implications for you where you might even be able to get a reduction on the NHS and and you know have them fixed that way so why do our breasts get bigger and like I said earlier it's not they don't always get bigger some of them do get smaller but it is it is down to the falling estrogen and progesterone levels yeah, as we go through the menopause we no longer need that glandular structure within our breast tissue which is essentially there to create the milk deliver the milk for our offspring and so because it's no longer in need it 
atrophies. So when the glandular tissue is starting to get smaller, that is just naturally replaced with adipose tissue. So basically fat cells. And because the glandular tissue is dense, the fat cells are less dense, they, they take up more space. And so that is generally why you will see an increase in your breast size. You may also get sore breasts, you might get sensitive breasts, you might have itchy nipples, you might have itchy breast skin. You know, there are so many different changes that can occur with the breast tissue when you go through menopause and beyond, particularly through your perimenopausal years, you might be getting a lot of breast pain it's associated, you know, like, I don't know if you remember when you went through puberty, I remember I always used to lie on my front when I went to sleep. And as soon as I started to go through puberty, I could not, it was agony. My nipples felt like they were like, I don't know, they just felt like they were, they, they were so painful and raw and sore and just achy and um you know you can have a similar situation as you go through the perimenopause as your hormone levels are fluctuating i would also get good at checking your breast health so you know once a month just check your breasts check your armpits for no sort of lumps because lumpy breasts are, are also quite a thing after you've gone through the menopause but if you're aware of what your breast tissue feels like normally then you can pick up any changes that might be occurring and you know, if you're lucky enough to be offered free breast screening i would definitely go and get that done too things to take into account is just general weight gain so as our sex hormones fall we become more insulin resistant, which is our fat storing hormone. And we do tend to slow down. We do less activity. And if one way you can overcome that is by maintaining activity, keep up with your strength training, really become, feed your food, feed your body like you would feed a human. We are so good at feeding ourselves with all the chemicals and the rubbish and it, it does not serve us. So while you're already starting to possibly gain weight as a result of going through the menopause, you know, the, the fat cells are also in your breasts. And so you, as well as your breasts themselves getting larger because the fat cells are fitting in where the glandular tissue was, you're also getting overall more weight because of the fact that your metabolism may be slowly slowing down and you're slowly increasing in size all over. The other thing also is as we go through menopause, we tend to have a sort of weight distribution. So you might find that your legs are getting skinnier. You might be losing some of the volume in your bum, uh, you, you know, your butt cheeks it tends to be the only thing that does move northwards. The rest sag down and you might find that your, your breasts are getting more saggy. It's highly likely because the rest of us does, you know, collagen production decreases, um, uh, elastin decreases, we get more wrinkly as we get older, things do tend to start to sag. But if your breasts are becoming heavier, then of course, you've got more weight as well. So in that instance, if you're happy having larger breasts, it might mean that you need to go and get your bra refitted. I highly recommend you do. And also make sure that you've got comfortable bras, you know, just going back to like the itchy skin that you might have or sensitive nipples, you want to be looking for fabrics that are going to allow your your skin to breathe that are going to be easy to keep clean and that are really soft. I mean, I, I tend to live in yoga bras because I just adore them. I, I get well-constructed yoga bras. I love bamboo, bamboo super soft. So be mindful of the, you know, the material that you're using. I've, I've got some beautiful bras that are like lacy and they cost an absolute fortune, but I will only really wear those now as a, on a special occasions because they're just not as comfortable. <laughs> I'm built for comfort these days. And the same goes for your underwear. You know, whatever knickers you're wearing, make sure you're getting something that's comfortable, that, that's easy to keep clean, uh, that's breathable. And again, I think bamboo for socks as well. I think bamboo for your underwear on the whole, it's soft, it's it's sustainably produced and um, and it lasts so, so long. You know, sometimes you might pay a little bit more for bamboo versus just like straight cotton. Um, or other products but bamboo does last an awful long time so if you know if, you, if you're looking to replace a few things I would certainly look at bamboo products because they just tick so many boxes we can also tend to hang on to more fluid as the metabolism slows down as we might be becoming more sedentary we may not be drinking enough water and you might think well if I'm hanging on to fluid do I really want to be drinking water? Because isn't that going to make me hang on to more? No, when you're drinking water, it helps to detoxify the body. It helps to purify the body. So you're getting rid of the toxins, which would otherwise cause you to hang on to that fluid. You want to keep up with your movement and also deep breathing does the same thing to stimulate the lymphatic system around your body. So like the heart, it's the pump and it pumps the blood around the body. The lymphatic system does not have a pump. 
So it relies upon our, our breathing and also movement. So you need to be moving and also keeping your body relatively clean with plenty of water, healthy food in order to stop that swelling. So, you know, when you see like the severe swelling around the ankles and the knees and the lower extremities, generally, I mean, it, it can be, mul there, there are multiple reasons why that could be happening, but I would look at your liver health, I'd look at how active you are, I'd look at your food, your water that you're drinking, and making sure that you are treating your body like a human body, because the large amounts of fluid that you might be getting are a sign that something's not quite right in your body. So if you've not already had it checked out, I would definitely go to the doctor and just get your bloods taken, see what's happening. Um, just know also that if it's something to do with your liver, the liver is really hard to spot that something's going wrong with it until it's almost too late. So if you've got that thought inside that something's not quite right, keep pushing. Again, be your own best advocate. Don't rely on, oh, it's fine. Go away and stop worrying about it. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Be your own best advocate and get a second, third, fourth, fifth opinion if you need to. Because the swelling around the base of your body is, is, is should not be there. It might be that you just need to drink more water, maybe clean up the food that you're eating and become more mobile and also reduce excess weight. We all tend to get sore joints as we get older, just with general wear and tear as well. But if you are carrying more weight and if you've got big boobs, you know, if your breasts are seriously larger... It's going to be pulling on your posture, it's going to bring your, your shoulders forward. It might uh, result in back pain. There's a very valid reason. One of my old neighbours, she had wanted to have breast reduction surgery for years. And she, she I think she was like a double H. She was, she, she'd have been a, a perfect candidate for breast reduction. And she was never offered it for some reason. And I don't know the details of it, but I know she desperately wanted it and she never got it. And that, and that was in quite an affluent area too. So keep pushing. If you don't get the answer that you want straight away, keep on at it because, well, it's your health, it's your life, it's your self-esteem. And when you're hunched over and pulled forward, it really does have a negative impact on how you breathe. Breathing is just so key in our helping us manage our relaxation response, but also digestion. You know, again, if you're hunched over, your digestion's not going to be so good, which has an impact on other aspects of your body. Also, yeast infections and things. You've got if you've got very pendulous breasts. This also sort of ties into your the the clothes that you wear, your underwear that you've got. But be really you know, get that bra fitted for you. It might need mean that you need some kind of structure underneath the breast tissue in order to sort of lift it up and push it out slightly. So it's not you know you've not constantly got skin on skin. And also in between, you know, if if you're sweating a lot, if you're really struggling with hot flushes, people go, "Ew, that's revolting." It, it's not. It's just it's just a natural thing that we have to take into account. And if you've got very large pendulous breasts you might be having those yeast infections that you're feeling embarrassed about and you shouldn't feel embarrassed about. Just a fact that's there. And if you've got these recurrent issues happening, if you did want a breast reduction and have it funded on the NHS, the, the fact that you've got these recurrent infections, you may have the biomechanical problems of, of being hunched over and the back pain, etc. You may be a candidate to have that breast reduction if that's something that you choose to have. It's also quite normal for one breast to suddenly grow and the other one not. That actually happened to the lady who I was referring to earlier who eventually managed to have both of them completely removed. She absolutely hated the fact that A, her boobs, her breasts were starting to get bigger after menopause, but then one got sizably larger than the other. And she just, there's absolutely no way I want this to happen. And so she fought long and hard to get her reduction her, her removal but I think any of us should be able to if, if we want to have our breasts removed because we hate them so much we don't identify with them at all particularly when they're negatively impacting your mental health you know, physiologically if you've got the bad posture th there are certain things hoops you have to jump through I don't think you can just go and say oh I think I need them making look a bit smaller because they're a bit droopy that obviously that's not going to happen unless you can pay for them privately but this really is for somebody who's, she just did not identify with that part of her body and just did not want them. And thankfully, she was able to get rid of them afterwards. And she just felt so relieved once they'd gone. She finally felt, she said, she, I felt free. She said before puberty, she felt free. She was allowed to climb the trees. And she was a real tomboy. And 
once some puberty came and she was supposed to be more feminine and she didn't want to be more feminine and and then these breasts grew and they didn't grow until quite late so she thought she'd managed to get through her teenage years without them arriving and then all of a sudden they did and then with menopause and they suddenly got larger and then one got significantly larger than the other one uh and she was she said it was just so freeing once they'd finally both gone and she could be who she wanted to be again in her life and feel her self-esteem was there she did not want the breasts and I'm really glad for her that she was able to have them removed fully and that she found that surgeon that was willing to grant her her wishes and really respect where she was coming from. Interested to hear, have your breasts got larger as you've gone through the menopause? I remember when I was uh, in a clothes shop in Falmouth and the lady, we were chatting about menopause. I, I love chatting to people about all sorts. And she was saying, oh, no, I, I need your help, you know, talking about menopause. She said, my boobs, she said, they suddenly got bigger. They've been tiny all my life. And then suddenly, yay! <laughs> She was so happy the fact that she finally got like, in her words, a pair of boobs that she was proud of. And so and, and I know a lot of women whose breasts have got quite a bit larger since they went through the menopause and not necessarily have put weight on around the rest of their body, too. So, you know, weight gain obviously does have a contributory factor, but not necessarily. It might just be that your your breast size gets larger. So or has yours, you know, have you noticed a decrease in your breast size? It'd be really interesting to hear what your thoughts on it are and um, and also, you know, what you think about the rules and regulations, the various hoops that you have to jump through in order to be granted a, a re reduction that is accommodated within the NHS or whatever health scheme, you know, wherever you're listening in from. I think most importantly, be your best advocate. And if you've got breasts that are significantly larger and they're causing you physical problems, get down to your GP and see what they can do and where they might be able to refer you to, because it might well be that you're able to have a reduction and, and have that also paid for is having a negative impact on your health and mental health, self-esteem. Mental health is so important. And I think it's, you know, well, there have there has to be rules and regulations that are in place so that people don't abuse it because obviously it's not cheap. But, you know, a woman can have an elective cesarean because she just doesn't want to go through natural childbirth. Well, you're looking at a similar sort of discussion here there are obviously variables, but an elective cesarean costs a fortune compared to natural childbirth. I don't think it's right to jump into one camp or the other and say, oh, you should be doing this or no, that should not be allowed for you because everybody's background is different and everybody's experience of their life is different. And like that lady that I referred to, first of all, she never wanted to have breasts. And thankfully, finally, she was able to have them removed because they got big enough. So she fulfilled those criteria. By the way, if you want to join a really happy, supportive, friendly, free community, I have recently launched my Thrive and Revive Facebook group. You will have to answer a few questions when you join. There's literally three, but it just means that I can make sure it's a safe space because there's a lot of weirdos out there. Um, <laughs> So I want to make sure that, you know, that it's a human being answering the questions. And also um, there is one that asks you, know, what's your major struggle? What would you like more support with? So that I can make sure that I'm creating content specifically around the problems that the ladies in there have, have joined with. Now, it is completely lady only and we do regular live sessions. We've just completed our first mini challenge, which was a water challenge. We're going to be doing a sugar detox in the new year. There's going to be all sorts. I'm going to be incorporating some of my mental health stuff in there and have a really fun, boozy, delectable, boozy dessert challenges on the way up to Christmas. You know, it is not a sterile community at all. It's about doing life, but also having some fun and, and also doing it in a way that is allows for the treats, but in a healthy way. So if you'd love to join that group, I would love to see you in there. There is a link in the description box if you're watching this on YouTube. If not, click the link in my bio if you're catching this on Instagram or Facebook and um, or just drop a comment and I can send you the link that way too if you'd like to be part and parcel of that. So I hope you have a great week. And if you've got anything you'd like me to cover in a future episode, drop it in the comments below. I'll add that to my rotation. If you've not yet done so, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss future episodes. And if you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It would mean the world to me. I'll catch you soon.